Hey, I'm Julie, Faith Van Balzer, and I am here with the super talented Deborah Boschert. So, Deborah, uh, you and I actually bumped into each other at Quilt Fest many years ago. It's true, many years ago. Yeah, that's funny that you remember that. I've been following you for years and years, and I think that was the first time we connected in person. Yeah, well, I remember because I didn't know a lot about Sakwa at all. And you uh, are, are you the current president of Sakwa or former president of Sakwa? I just finished my term okay. in May. So for people who also might be like me, who don't know a lot about it, will you tell us a little bit about what it is? I'd love to. So Sakwa is Studio Art Quilt Associates. It's a nonprofit member organization dedicated to promoting the art quilt. And we have all kinds of members, um, art quilters, collectors, curators, educators. We have uh, people who have who are brand new to art quilting. And we also have um, art quilters who have had solo shows all over the world. We're an international organization, almost 4,000 members, and in about 37 different countries. So lots of opportunities for exhibition and um, educational, professional development, creative development, and also I think my favorite thing about Sakwa is just connecting with other people who really, really love creating art with fabric. Yeah, I think one of the things to me that was so interesting is I feel like Sakwa has changed a lot of things about the quilt world, particularly like in the last 10 years, it feels like. Like I saw a lot of the... Um, things they used to say about how quilts had to like not be on stretchers or they had to like particularly be quilted. Like a lot of those rules seem to have changed. Totally. You're, I think you're absolutely right. And we still see some of those expectations in various venues, but I think you're right. Sakwa really has get gotten people to understand what an art quilt can be and how broad that category is. There are people who use paint and photography and digital tools. There are people who create art quilts with piecing or with applique. It really is just wide open. There's three-dimensional art quilts. There's, like you said, some that are on stretcher bars, all different sizes and shapes. You know, quilt really no longer has to be just exclusively for the bed. Yeah, I've seen so many quilts lately, I feel like with uneven edges and like different kinds of shapes and like tons of dimension and things that are just so interesting. I remember many, many years ago, it's got to be at least a decade, maybe more. Um, I had a small crick group when I lived in New York and one of the women was a quilt artist who said her biggest concern was how to make her quilts hangable so that a gallery owner could understand how to sell them. Because I think as simple as it sounds to put the rod through it and hang them, that's still too hard for a lot of people. And so she had, um, at the time she was doing a split pocket so that you could just hang it on a nail, almost like it was a wire, which I think a lot yes. of people do now. But it's yes. so funny to think that like people are so blown away and confused by the idea of a quilt as art that they can't even figure out how to hang it on the wall. Yes, I, I hope that we're making some progress. Baby steps. <laughs> now, I've taken some classes with you, with her, which were excellent. And you have a Thank wonderful you. book that I own, which is also excellent. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about sort of your career in terms of teaching, writing a book, like all the many things that you do. Yeah, I would love to. So I make what I call art quilt collages. And all of my work is layers of fabric, paint, and stitching. So I use raw edge fused applique for the construction of my work. And I love combining both commercial prints with fabrics that I have added original surface design to. And usually that's some sort of printmaking using original foam or rubber stamps or found object printing with found objects. So I love incorporating my own mark making with commercial prints. And then I also really love the design element that you can add with stitching, both free motion quilting that I do on a domestic sewing machine, but also hand embroidery. I really love incorporating both the machine stitching and the hand stitching. So I had the great opportunity to write a book about my inspiration and process and favorite materials and techniques. And then I've been teaching all over the country, mostly to quilt guilds and at 
quilt events and retreats for the past several years. And then, like a lot of us, pivoted to enhancing my virtual offerings in 2020. And now I just love teaching virtually. So many great opportunities that we can explore because students are in their space. Um, so I really, I'm doing lots of virtual teaching and enjoying that so much. Yeah, it's been a big shift, but I have to say, I don't, I mean, I think it particularly for sewing and quilting classes, I love not having to drag a machine. I love not having to share an iron. I love having like my whole stash and my design wall and like all kinds of things. And, and I don't know, I, there are things I miss about having that in-person experience where people are really like talking and you're accidentally overhearing a conversation and all that kind of stuff. And I know that a lot of us try to replicate some of those aspects in our classes, but the, the packing and unpacking and traveling and I mean, like it is amazing to be able to take a class from somebody in another part of the world from your house. It's magical. Absolutely. And I have to say the recorded aspect of having so many classes being recorded so you can review things. I mean, I, I used to take copious, copious notes in my notebook during classes and I still do, but I just don't do as much when I know I have the recording, you know? Right. Right. And the other cool thing is that sometimes you're in a virtual classroom, like you said, with people from all over the world. So it used to, I definitely miss things about teaching in person for sure. But when you're teaching a class to a guild where everybody there are already friends and they know each other, that's great, super fun. But there's also something really just inspirational and new and fresh and unexpected about being in a virtual classroom with people that you don't know from potentially all over the world. Yeah, I think it's amazing. Yeah. And it's so, it's also fun to see like what different supplies people have in other places that, you know, we don't. And I, there's so many fun things about it. I think for me, like I will never get tired of being a student in classes because I will never get tired of just like being filled with other people's ideas, excitement and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, totally. I, I absolutely agree. So one of the things that I think is really unique and um, uh, about your work is you use a ton of personal symbols. I do. And you have several motifs that come up over and over. I'm thinking particularly of ladders and chairs. Yes, it's true. Can you see that? Yeah, I know that you shoulder. teach like classes about this and stuff, but if people are curious about like personal symbols, can you talk a little bit about how those even entered into, was it like a purposeful choice to start including symbols or did you just notice they kept coming up over and over again? You know, the, the first symbol that I used most often and most regularly was the house, just that very simple five-sided house shape. And I was making a lot of house quilts during the time in my life when my husband and I were moving around a lot. So clearly I was exploring some of those feelings of being unrooted and constantly in flux by using that house shape. And when I look back at those quilts, often the house is sort of floating and it's sort of ambiguous between the foreground and the background, which sort of is symbolic of that, um, all of those transitions that we were going through. So I think that was when I first started to think about how I could use shapes to represent ideas and emotions and feelings. So that's what basically what a symbol is. It's a shape that represents an idea or an experience. Um, and then as I've thought more about the ideas and experiences that I wanted to express in my work, but I wanted them to be somewhat abstracted or representational. That's when other symbols started to make their way into my work, like ladders, chairs, bowls. Um, botanical shapes also show up regularly, usually symbolizing growth and change and the cycle of life. So that's sort of what I'm thinking about um, when when they when you see them in my work. I think it's I think it's really cool to have a personal vocabulary. It's one of the things that's always drawn me um, to like the work of Chagall. And, you know, there are a number of painters who have a library of personal symbols. And I think it it makes the work more impactful because you feel the story. Right. You know, coming out of it. Totally. And I think interestingly, I think the viewer can also put his or her story often into those symbols. So what a ladder means to me, or even the experiences that I'm expressing 
in a quilt with a ladder may be very different from what the viewer could connect to with that same shape. So I also love that about it. Yeah, I think that's true. We all bring our own experiences to it. And I and I, it is one of the magical things about art that we can all look at the same pile of fabric or finished quilt and like have different points of view about it. Right. Now, a fun fact about you, uh, which I know from peeping on your Instagram, uh, is that you went on my dream vacation to Antarctica. Oh my gosh, I did. In, 20, uh, in 2019, in February of 2019, we went to Antarctica. My husband wanted to take that trip for his 50th birthday. It was just amazing. We had such just an absolutely fabulous time. What a stunning part of our world. Yeah, it was super. I, I would go back in a second. You know, so um, many years ago, I went to the Galapagos Islands with my family and it was truly like, you know, one of those like awe-inspiring words cannot do it justice. People say things and you're like, okay, hyperbole, like calm down. That's not possibly true, but like mind-blowing, amazing experience. And I don't even like the outdoors or animals. So this is really saying something. Right. But one of the things that when we were there is we were just like so mind blown that you're talking to other people and being like, isn't this the most amazing experience you've ever had? And across the board, people said, yes, except for Antarctica. <laughs> and, and I there remember you know. thinking, really? Antarctica? And the more I looked into it, the more I realized what a vibrant, you know, sort of amazing, gorgeous place it is. So that's definitely on my bucket list. I really want to go. Did you make any art inspired by that trip? I haven't made any art specifically inspired by that trip yet. Um, I think, you know, I don't make, I haven't made too much art about specific trips or experiences. Um, I think it would be, if I, it, it's really the colors, it's the colors mm -hmm. that would show up. If I was going to pull out one thing from that experience, from that trip, from those memories and apply it to a piece of work, it would be that gray, white, blue, black, silvery color palette. Well, you got so some maybe, of the blues working behind you. Yes, you're seeing just a few corners of uh, quilts here above me. So yeah, I, I had... I've had the great pleasure of watching your class already that you made for the Artful Holiday, and it's fantastic. Do you awesome. want to? I'm so glad um, you liked it. But of course, uh, do you want to give people a little bit of a preview of sort of what you're doing? Yeah, absolutely. So the holiday that I picked was the winter and summer solstice, which, as you and I are recording this, is actually coming up this weekend. Um, wow. So the longest day and the shortest days of the year, which are both, I think, equally worth celebrating. I mean, there's definitely, I love the idea of lengthening nights and more restful times. And of course, I also love the idea of lengthening days and bright, sunny, long, productive, fun, full of growth and potential days in the summer. So I made a project that is actually reversible. So you can have summer solstice on one side and winter solstice on the other side. When I was recording the class, maybe you noticed and viewers will certainly notice um, saying summer solstice several times is tricky. <laughs> It is. It's a Susie sells she shells by the seashore kind of moment. It yeah. is. But I thought it was totally brilliant when I watched it. I mean, I think there are a couple of things that are great about the class. I mean, first of all, like the reversible factor to me, if you're going to spend the time making something handmade to decorate your home, it's nice when it works for multiple different things. And the idea that you can just flip it over and it gives you the other side is amazing. And I also, I'm always drawn to the idea of um, working sort of in a series on multiple things. And by having it be reversible, it kind of is that series yeah. where you're doing the same thing, but like changing the design slightly, you know? Exactly. 
And then I also thought it was so smart because obviously you're an art quilter. You have tons of art quilting supplies and you could go on and on. But it actually is a project that I feel like someone who with little to no sewing experience and someone who's not a sewer and doesn't even have sewing supplies could make. So I thought that was really smart because, again, it opens it up to sort of more people. And I, I do think that for me, part of the ethos of like... Um, you know, even like SACWA or some of these organizations is to sort of lift everybody up and say like, listen, this is accessible for all of us, not like this is a club, you know, that we all belong to. And I know that you Absolutely. know this, but one of my big goals with the Artful Holiday class was to really like give you quilters and printmakers and collage artists and all sorts of people and yet make it so that everybody could dabble a little and play. I know you're a dabbler. Totally. Yeah. And this project is created with raw edge fused applique, my favorite technique and hand embroidery. It doesn't even require a sewing machine, though you certainly could create it with a sewing machine. Yeah. So it, it doesn't take too many supplies and it's a good, if you're interested in collage with fabric and using embroidery as an embellishment, this is a great project to explore those projects, that kind of a project. So last question, because you are um, you are my go to when people ask about like how to fuse fabric and stuff. I always direct them towards your YouTube video about it because I think Thank it's you. just clear and great. And I did not know that the longer you wait to peel the paper, the easier it is. That was a big game changer for me. Yep. Um, so my very last question is. When did you discover fusing and mm -hmm. was it like a moment? Did you know that you had met your love or was it like, mm, I don't know. And then you sort of, it came back to you later. I never went back. I never <laughs> went back to piecing. I never went back to piecing once I discovered fusing. Yeah, I really didn't. I took a class uh, from Melody Johnson um, in probably maybe like 2003 or four took a couple of workshops from her and she teaches a uh, fusible applique, raw edge fused applique. And that was when I really started to understand the potential. Um, mm -hmm. And over the years, I definitely expanded the other techniques that I incorporate into the basic technique of fused applique and then also develop my own sort of visual, personal, identifiable style but yeah, absolutely. Taking that class from Melody Johnson and using my favorite fusible webbing is Wonder Under by Pellon and just really getting familiar with that process of fusing the fabric and cutting shapes and layering and the right kind of heat and the best iron. Not that it's difficult. It's pretty straightforward. But after years and years and years, you, you do kind of uh, develop some efficiency with the technique. And yeah, I never went back to piecing. I mean, I pieced a quilt for my daughter's 16th birthday, which was eight years ago. That's the last quilt I pieced <laughs> even before. And I only did it because it was her birthday. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm done piecing quilts. I love piece quilts. I could piece quilts, but uh, it's all raw edge fused applique for me. Yeah, this quilt behind me is raw edge fused applique. And I think that like what I figured out is when you make a quilt, there's obviously like the designing part of it. Then there's the construction part of it, which yep. is very technical a lot of times. And then there's obviously the quilting part of it. And the thing that I'm into is I don't like the quilting and I don't like the construction that much. What I really like is the design part. The and so you know, that's one of those things which I always tell people, like, go towards the things that you like and find the ways to make it work for you. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. And like we were talking about earlier, uh, you know, with art quilts, you can get away with a lot of flexibility as far as stitching and construction. I mean, does it even really have to be stitched? Maybe, maybe not. You know, it certainly doesn't need much stitching. Um, if you're not using the stitching to hold the layers together um, and you're not going to launder it, obviously, or cuddle up with it on the couch, then you just have a lot more flexibility. Agreed. It's the same thing as like my frustration with why should they turn the quilt over when they're judging a quilt show? Like who looks at the back of a painting? You know what I mean? Exactly. 
Exactly. Anyway, separate issue. I want to say thank right. you so much, Deborah, for being here and for being a part of the Artful Holiday. I know that people are going to love your class. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Julie. I'm really just thrilled to be included. Thanks for inviting me. Yay.